Yeah, breaking news on a deadly shooting outside of Chicago High School in December. Two teens were killed, two others hurt when they were shot outside Benito Juarez High School. The Chicago Police Department Just, having this news conference. Let's listen in. Um, a felony first degree murder, two counts of attempted first degree murder, one count of aggravated discharge of, on school grounds, one count of aggravated unlawful use of a weapon and four counts of unlawful use of a weapon. I want to extend my condolences uh, once again to the families of the young people whose lives were taken uh, from them far too early by this senseless act of violence. I also want to let the surviving victims know that we stand with you as you continue to heal and process and grieve the horrific events of that day and uh, to the entire Juarez High School community. Uh, teachers, family, principals, uh, we are here to support you. Uh, detectives were able to identify the juvenile offender during uh, this investigation. The Area 3 Homicide Investigative Support Team and members of the Bureau of Counterterrorism set up surveillance on the offender on yesterday where we believed he was located and he was placed in the custody at this residence that we were surveilling. I want to thank the Area 3 detectives and the Area 3 homicide investigative team, as well as the officers from the Bureau of Counterterrorism and the 12th District uh, officers for their collaboration that led to the apprehension of this offender. I also want to thank the Cook County State's Attorney's Office uh, for their partnership. Thank you, Kim, in bringing justice to the grieving families and injured victims. Thank you as well to uh, Chicago Public School staff, uh, Pedro, Jadine, thank you so much for working so closely with us as we work to strengthen safety for students across the city. Uh, as I close my portion out, I ask that you please continue to keep all of those affected in this tragedy in your prayers. With that, I'll turn it over to Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox. Kim. Thank you, Superintendent Brown. And greetings to you, CEO uh, Pedro Martinez of Chicago Public Schools. I certainly do wish that we were standing together under very different circumstances. Today, we stand with the superintendent and CEO Martinez to announce that my office has charged a, sus a suspect in the senseless murder of two teenagers at Barnito Juarez High School this past December, a place that should be safe for our children. As the superintendent said, and I just want to clarify, the suspect is being charged with two counts of murder and two counts of attempted murder in adult court. The gun, the weapons charges, the aggravated unlawful use of a weapon, the aggravated discharge of a weapon, and the unlawful use of weapons charges will be in juvenile court. The fact of the matter is, is that we lost three teenagers, or two teenagers, and our suspect is also a teenager. So there are three children who are lost in this not to mention the mental and emotional toll that this has taken on the war as students, the faculty, and the staff. As a mother, I can only imagine what the families of the victims are going through. My heart goes out to them and to all those parents who have lost children to the violence that continues to plague our communities. We stand here today taking the first step towards justice for these families because of the collaborative efforts of my office, the Chicago Public Schools, the Chicago Police Department, and just as importantly, the community. Our offices cannot do this alone. The criminal justice system is not just police and prosecutors and judges. The community is the most important aspect of our criminal justice team. We cannot be everywhere, but community members are. You are our eyes and our ears, and it is because of you that we are here today. We are grateful for those who have been brave enough to come forward to ensure that the offender is caught and will now be held accountable. And between the witnesses and others who came forward to connect this investigation with our law enforcement partners to bring us to this prosecution. Again, I want to thank the community and those who came forward to share with us the information that led to the apprehension. Again, to the families of the victims, I pray that you can start to heal and know that we will do everything in our power to ensure justice. I also
the staff. It is something that they will carry with them for the rest of their lives. And it is because of this and the trauma that has been inflicted upon them that we must be extra delicate in how we deal with our young people in the aftermath of this loss and our teachers, our true first responders. We should not lose sight of that even in the wake of this prosecution. Just know that our office continues to stand in partnership with the Chicago Police Department and the community to ensure justice and safety for all of our communities. With that, I turn it over to CPS Superintendent Pedro Martinez. Thank you, uh, District Attorney Fox, and thank you for the partnership. First, I want to start by saying how grateful we are for the partnership we have with CPD and the DA office and their support in keeping our school community safe. We're grateful for their tremendous and swift work in closing out this investigation of the large tragedy brought to our school community at Benito Juarez High School. <clears throat> Bringing this closure is, is very important in towards restoring the calm and safety that all of our school communities need and deserve. It has been in all hands on deck within Chicago Public Schools in ensuring that we are working towards both the safe, safety both inside and outside of our schools. On that note, I want to take this opportunity to remind everyone of the steps we have taken in partnership with the Chicago Police Department. Over the past few months, CPD has been providing external support across the city in a form of having patrol officers available for dismissal in select situations where we've had a need for special attention. In addition, in supporting uh, selected dismissal areas, these officers are also conducting external checks throughout the day to look for suspicious activity. The district, especially, especially our Office of Safety and Security, is working with CPD on an ongoing basis to keep our schools safe. As we all know, there's not one single answer to violence in our communities. It requires parents, schools, and community members, and police working together to support our youth both inside and outside of our buildings, as our district attorney just said. Again, we're grateful for CPD's continued commitment providing the support and special attention detail for the rest of the school year, and I want to thank personally Superintendent Brown and the department support of the Juarez School community and the work they've undertaken to bring us today's arrest. And on a personal note, um, this, is, this is very personal for me. Not only in being in this role, I am so proud of the work that our teachers are doing every day to support our children as we strengthen our recovery efforts in our district academically. But when it comes to safety, I, we cannot do this alone. Our teachers can't do this alone. Our school's principals cannot do this alone. It has to be together with CPD, with community members, with the DA's office. It's the only way this works, everybody. Thank you. We'll just take a few on-topic questions only. And uh, we're going to pass around the mic. Hi, Superintendent. This is uh, Maria Berreyesa from Univision. Uh, I have a question, and it's in regards to the suspect. Is, was he a and did he had any criminal record? So um, we're, we're going to be uh, a little bit careful till we get through bond court with further descriptions of uh, the offender. Uh, at some point, we'll, we'll, we'll be glad to visit with uh, you and others if they have questions about the offender. But we're going to wait until we get to uh, bond court on, I believe, tomorrow. Talk to me a little bit more about what security has been in place and what will continue the rest of the year um, at this school and, and perhaps others in the area. Definitely. So Juarez has been a high priority, but so have been schools like Michelle Clark and other schools where we've had incidents um, this school year. And again, I'm just very appreciative because we have patrol officers that are dedicated uh, to select areas in our schools so that our school leaders, Janine Chow, our, our director of, of security, have complete access. So whenever there's any, any concerns that our school leaders may have or a staff person, we can have special coverage at dismissal times or when school starts. Uh, and we're working on even solidifying even a longer term plan because, again, it's going to take all the support to, to help keep our children not only safe in the schools, but also in the communities. Much about the identity of the suspect. Do you have anything about his, their criminal history? We do. Again, we want to make sure and, and get through bond court and then we'd be glad to share his criminal history with you all. Yeah. All the sensitive nature of being a juvenile. Yes. Sure, 
reacting into CPD Superintendent David you, Brown and other really leaders talking about charges filed it's against a 16-year-old for wow. the shooting outside of Benito Juarez High School that was in on December 16th. In that case, four teens were shot, two of them were killed. And we should learn more about the background of this young person who is, as Marie just said, 16 years old in outside of bond court when that happens, according to the police superintendent, who was also joined by the Cook County State's attorney and the CEO of the Chicago Public School System.